essence. So, with that, let us pray so that we can start. Yeah? Thank you. So we pray. Divine Father, Daddy, your love you have always shown us as a children. Much care and protection, that which we do not even deserve, you've always given unto us. Our hearts are full of thanksgiving, God, on this blessed Sabbath morning, that you've allowed us to sit in this place, God, that we may be able to learn from you. I will pray, God, that you may impress our mind with your words. Give us a teachable spirit, and a heart yearning to know of you. Open our minds, open our heart, open our lips, and open our eyes, that whatever we see in this Sabbath, whatever we do, whatever we speak, whatever we hear, Lord, let it be that which gives your name glory. So forgive us for anything that we have trespassed against you throughout the week. And Lord, I pray that you give us a rejuvenation of faith, a refreshment in today's Sabbath, Lord. I will pray that as we start this discourse, then let your children have the hottest bread that, that can ever be served on the Sabbath day, Lord. I thank you for your presence amid us, and thank you because you've answered our prayers, for it is in faith in Jesus' name. So, uh, happy Sabbath once more, and happy day. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Is there any Buddha who knows the other? It's a common question in this class of the Sabbath. Unawajua wote. So, I'm going to unawajua wote. So, I'm the only one who knows everyone. Interesting, interesting. So, we will start by introducing ourselves. And uh, you just pick the mic, you pass it as introduce ourselves. Brother Build. Limit. Elvis Wanya. Nelly. I like the preciseness of Seventh day Adventist. Nelly, yeah. Brother Build. Okay. So it is beautiful. <laughs> Eric Kutuoma. Brian. I'm Brian. Thank you. Thank you. So, Nyakongo, question. What's his name? The guy. You didn't get it. Wonderful. Nelly, you are here. What's his name? Yeah. Sorry? Sao. What's his name? You, you, you don't know. Wonderful, wonderful. Interesting. What's his name? You, you didn't get it. You didn't get it or you can't remember it. <laughs> okay. Interesting, interesting. Okay, Vivian, you're sitting next to him. What's his name? Uh, you're also confirming. Interesting. Okay, nice, nice. So, so this is Eric Otuoma, this is Vivian, this is Nelly, this is Elvis, Lynette, Peter, and Nyakongo. So, I believe you all know my name, so I don't need to introduce myself. Uh, Elvis, you know my name? I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that this is what I just asked specifically. I'm Holliston Obonyo. Yeah, so we'll just start off. And, uh, it is, it, it's for online news, eh? It's for online news. That's why you're not getting the voice. It's for online news. So, so, so. <coughs> how has the week been? <laughs> you took time while well, thinking about how your week has been. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Vivian, how has your week been? Great. It has been great. Wonderful. That's a very beautiful definition of a week. I think you'll tell us how great it was. <laughs> how great was your week? <laughs> That's very high, eh? Ah, nice, nice. So thank God for you. Thank God for you. 
So Eric, how was the week? Been? Interesting is interesting, yeah. I think this is the sole purpose of this, is the sole purpose of this discussion because if, if it's about learning or going through the lesson, it's made for seven days, if I'm not wrong. And today is Sabbath. Is there any day a Sabbath? No, number. Every day. Kuna topic in the Sabbath. So I do five with Vanya. So go on. We are on time good enough. Are interested? Okay, I met a friend of mine. When you are lost in time. <laughs> and I, I have a story. Ah, nice. yeah. That must be interesting. I, I, I understand you. But I can't feel you. But I understand you. Awesome. So, I think this side will be nice, but let's get to you. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. In my week was it. Very good. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Um, I think I'm new here. Yeah. My name is Daniel. Daniel, yeah. And I'm from Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Yeah. Um, I'm and I'm student here in Jakarta. Yes. Post. <laughs> so, um, my. My weekend was very good. Praise, yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. You, you heard that his week was very good. There's a difference with good. <laughs> There's a very big difference. Very good. Good. Okay. Interesting. <coughs> uh-huh. Let me get to this side. The letter how was your week? was kind of busy, not good at all. I, I don't know how to describe that personally. <laughs> but anyway, she understands how our week has been. So, I hope at the end of it, all you thank God. Uh, it was not that very good, but at the end of it, we thank God. I, I, I do believe that when it comes to Sabbath, like, the occurrences of the week are now, like, they fall aside. She week was too busy. Like I had a very quite rough and busy week. Didn't have time enough even for myself. But then it got to Friday. I don't know what happened, but things just fell in place. And I had the best evening that I ever had all the week. So I, I thank God. <laughs> it was my Friday. <laughs> so I'm the one who understands it well, yeah? It was a very beautiful Friday. And now the Sabbath is also nice. So we, we need to move into the lesson. And uh, what topic are we doing this this week? What topic are we doing this week? Whoever just throughout the week, you, you didn't read, you just decided and flipped the book and, and you saw a, a topic. Which topic? Seeing the goldsmith's faith. Thank you. So have that in mind. Before you get into that, last week you had a lesson class. How many didn't attend a lesson class? That's now where I want to know. How many didn't attend a lesson class? Ah, thank you. So three, I already said that we excuse them. What did you do last week? Whichever class you are in. What did you do last week? Like, uh, not necessarily the topic, yeah. But what did you come out with from the last week's discourse? We've not changed the lesson. We are still doing the principles in Christ. And uh, now that we are seeing the goldsmith's face, it's just a builder from last week. It will be very, very nice if you 
know last week, then you build it up with this week. That's how it goes. So if you take this week and jump last week, the mind is somehow going to con get confused. Uh, let me use a practical example. Uh, how many of us have, have ever watched series? I have. I, I can't lie. I, I, I did sometimes back. So, you know, you know you're jumping from episode 3 and going to episode 5. It, it doesn't add up, right? Exactly. So that, that is now how the lesson is made. Especially, you know, at least the book of Genesis, Genesis was like a, a topical and a chapter, ch chapter in place. Yeah? So at least you could jump to a given chapter. But now in the crucible with Christ, it's one episode is building the other. Like, you know, using the knowledge that I kind of have, it's like there are these series that an episode is like kind of a new all together. And there are these series that they build up on each other. So this is that which build up on each other. For a complete understanding, it would be nice if you, you get what was there last week, even the other week. It's, it's hard to read it. It's a very interesting, it's a very interesting book. I always say I don't know how to describe it because I've said over the past years while I've been doing lesson classes, I've said I like very many lessons of the quarters. I feel I love this more. What, what, did, we, what did we do last week? Or, or what came out last week? The main thing that came out last week. Anyone? Yeah. Where's the mic? not devoid of challenges, difficulties, and so on. Amen. Amen. But the journey we walk with as Christians is not devoid of challenges. Thank you very much for that. Any other person? Any last individual? Yes, brother. So last week I did not attend any uh, class pertaining to this lesson. Mm -hmm. Class. But I perused over through the lesson mm. and I found this part of July 13th, which also known as to be very interesting. Mm. Whereby I found that uh, there is there is a, a prayer that I found there. It said said, Lord, please purge us of everything and anything that stands in the way of our faith. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It was on Wednesday 13th. Uh, Wednesday 13th of this. Interesting. Thank you. Be blessed. Be blessed. You took time to go through the lesson even if you are not in class. Uh, it's, it's always much of a blessing. Uh, a question I would ask. How will you perfect your skills in mathematics? By calculating mathematics. Right? How, how will you understand? How will you understand calculus? By going through calculus classes. If at all not in the lectures, but by you studying calculus, right? Uh, there's this common unit that I think everyone has done, HIV and AIDS or communication skills. How would you understand that unit well enough? By going through it, yeah? So there, there's something called the Bible. And there is never a day the Bible will come, no matter how powerful the Bible is, yeah? There's never a day the Bible will come and impress itself upon your mind. And that is the fact that we have to live with. And there's never a day that you'll just wake up in the morning and you find that God, because he's powerful, which we know he is, he just decides and places all the verses in your head. No, it, there's never a day that that will come. I know we look at preachers, we look at people who have Bible knowledge in their head, yeah? So that they say, look at this verse, look at this verse, and they speak it directly from the, maybe probably the King James Version, that's what you use compound. And you're like, interesting, how do we like this person? But many will be lost while desiring to be, to want to be like those. Many will be lost while desiring, but not making an initiative to become. So, it's an interesting thing that we are doing 
in the crucible with Christ. And uh, a statement the author made last week, still fresh in my mind, is that we do not know that we walk with God just because we have soft part of life. But we know we walk with God because of the obedience of that which he has given us to obey. So I am not sure that I walk with God because tribulations are off. No. Even if tribulations are on, I am not sure if, if they are from God. It's probably there could be temptations from Satan that are different. Or there could be trials from God. One thing I would know that I am walking with God is when I obey the voice of God. That's the only thing that will make me sure that I am walking with God. And so this week we are doing the build-up on still the same. Seeing the goldsmith's face. Seeing the goldsmith's face. Ah, in my experience in life, I've never seen a goldsmith. Maybe in a maybe in a movie. Say I said I, I have I've I've had experience in those parts. And I believe from a mere man's definition it's just a goldsmith is a goldsmith. A person working on gold. <laughs> or nearly you can describe it better. Someone who purifies gold. Interesting. That's so, that's so nice. That's someone who purifies gold. Wonderful. I, how I would love to touch a purified gold. How I would love. Not just to see and to touch. And one day I believe I will. So, somebody read the key text of the, this week, or the key text of the Sabbath. The key text of the week, kind of. It was even read from, from the pulpit. I, I don't always remind people of the key text. It's because I believe throughout the week you should have been going through the key text. Thank you, brother. Uh, the Bible says, eh? uh, second, that is 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all, with open face beholding, as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, thank you. But from a mirror, from a glass, we behold and we are changed to the Spirit of the Lord. So, we try to marry the verse with the topic. Like we have seeing the goldsmith face and we have that we all with unveiled When, when we look at the key text and we look at uh, the topic that we are doing, it's like when we see the goldsmith's face, we see this person who is purifying the gold. Yeah? And uh, a purified gold is this gold that when you look at it, then you could see your own face. Yeah? It's, like, it's like a mirror, though not a mirror, because a mirror is a cheap thing. <coughs> and everyone has a mirror even in the house. Maybe not all, maybe not all, but I believe most, apart from some men. Yeah. But, so gold is like a mirror, but it's not a mirror. It's very expensive, very important. And uh, seeing a, gold's, a goldsmith's face is like this gold, you see the goldsmith's face. He himself sees himself. You, when you look at this gold, then you see yourself. That is the point this purification should be getting us to. And so, the lesson author introduces us to the verse that but we all, like now we behold by seeing God in a glass all together. And there's a verse, it should be in, should be in 1 John chapter 3, that saying that, for as now we see him as he is, but at that time, now we see him through a, a, a glass, but then at that time we shall see him as he is. And, uh, just allow me open it. it. Should be First John chapter three. Uh, like, let me read from verses two and says that, beloved, now are we sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know not that. 
but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is and you look at this verse and you listen to John speaking and he's saying that for that time we shall see who is he speaking about Christ definitely speaking about God here yeah so we will shall see God we shall see Christ as he is but for now we do not yet see him fully as he is why because our eyes are like tainted with a mirror that is not purified and today when i look at the scripture there's a reason why i read this scripture i read the same same verse today and if i read it tomorrow i have another different impression I don't know if it only happens to me but I believe it happens yeah like you read a verse today you get a different impression tomorrow you get the same another different one because there's something that I always like saying in this class called the plan of redemption the plan of redemption and this is the plan that all human being is made for but god when god saw that men had fallen then god decided that all the fallen men all the fallen men should be redeemed so a plan was made for these men these men should be got and these men should be brought from the point you know when you fall i can't fall on the ground when i was on the ground you fall from a higher ground that's why a song says that you lift me up on a higher ground like daily i strive to move forward him that was sung just before was saying that the earth shall keep a jubilee and you don't know how much we look at into these hymns but i believe these hymns are very much important as the bible is of course the bible is the greater light but i believe these hymns are also from men who are inspired and so when i look at the earth shall keep a jubilee then i look at the men that shall be on that earth and who are these men the men that are purified pur- pur- to become the perfect gold the gold that is needed so yes this is what the author brings to us this week that we need to see the goldsmith face and he tells us that we need to be this now you know when you build it from the previous one we say that there is no christian life that should be there without trials right i know some of us live life that you don't see trials i would like to ask a question i would like to ask a question it is an interesting one it is it is also personal somehow how will you know you can't steal if you don't if you don't find yourself in a place that there is no stealing you can't exactly how will you know uh that you you can always share when yourself you don't have something to share no, no, it's it's that genuine by the way like how will you know that you can share with someone something that you have while you don't have something to share you wouldn't know you don't always belong in that how that i would share with this person uh, how would that i would buy this person lunch so that i will invite this person for lunch or for dinner over and over you'll just be like you are longing to do so but if you've never been placed in a position of now inviting them over then how will you know that you will be you will be able to do so you just be thinking you can i've heard some say that you can't say you are tempted of money until you become rich what you day they you say uh, you are not tempted you just they just see money you are not tempted because you don't have that money you have just but a little part <laughs> but i do believe uh, that's from a different conversation but i do believe that even the little that you have you can always prove faithful because when christ says that them that are faithful in the little shall be faithful in the the big one but if you've never been found in a position question comes into mind when i interact with seventh day adventist you know we are the men of the law yeah who are also described men of the law the pharisees i'm not saying we're pharisees <laughs> i'm not saying we're pharisees but we are the men of the law 
which I very much agree. We are men of the law. Personally, I'd say I'm a man of the law. Even God is, God is a person of the law. Christ is a man of the law. But also Pharisees is a man of the law. So what now brings the difference? Thank you. So in life, we have legalism and we have love. If you ask a seventh day Adventist today, you know we are in church. The problem today is that we are in a sleeping church. That's the problem. We are in a sleeping church. Now, this sleeping church, not, not everyone is sleeping. Not everyone is sleeping. It could be not, a, not even one person sleeping in this congregation right here. It could be. But it also could be that many of us inside in this class are sleeping. Like what do I mean? Uh, today if I just approach a seventh day Adventist and I asked him, can you name three of our seven pillars? Uh, let me try with the class now. Uh, we have seven pillars of the church. Anyone who can name, not an individual, can we have a, a mention of the same? Anyone who knows one? One of the pillars? The pillars of the Seventh-day Adventist church. Any trial? Okay. That is not common. Uh, yeah. We have 28 fundamental beliefs. 28 fundamental beliefs. Animations, trials, we have 28 of them. As I mentioned, to just one, 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 we move. They're very simple, by the way. Yes, yes. Somebody give him the mic. I think keeping, keeping the commandments is one of our fundamental beliefs. Keeping the commandment. Thank you, brother. Yeah, Nelly. Godhead. Godhead. Thank you. Any other? Eh? I'm a Samayaki. Another one? Baptism. Baptism. <laughs> another one? Yes, Eric. Give Eric. Marriage. Marriage. Interesting. Another one? <laughs> like this is just a sample of what I'm, I'm trying to say like you know I do believe if I call myself an engineer then I have I should have the knowledge of engineering right if I am a medic then I have knowledge of medicine so if I'm a seventh Adventist what knowledge should I have thank you my friends we have this fund 28 fundamental beliefs that's if ever you attended a baptismal class, if ever you did, maybe you didn't, I will excuse that. But these are there. You don't have to attend a baptismal class. We have the book, Fundamental Beliefs. Yeah? It's even online. Just Google Fundamental Beliefs of the Adventist Church, you'll have it. I can even share with you a soft copy. We have seven pillars. One thing I do know is that we know the Ten Commandments. And I know we do know. But now, even the world knows the Ten Commandments. <laughs> you know the Ten Commandments in order. <laughs> if, if, even kids in high school are taught the Ten Commandments in order. So what makes us Seventh-day Adventists? How would we claim we are Seventh-day Adventists? These things, like, just get time to go through them. When somebody asks you, what do you believe in as a Seventh-day Adventist? That's why we have 28 fundamental beliefs. Just tell them we have the Godhead. Godhead, dis disintegrate it again. We have the Father, we have the Son, we have the Holy Spirit. I don't know what's hard with that. We have baptism. We, we, we have there's very, very many. Even the Sabbath you can't mention. And you are here on Sabbath. <laughs> Of the pillars, no, that one I should not mention. Go and, go, go and do a research concerning the pillars. Because I've, I've realized that people do not know what the pillars are. Okay, let me leave that. There's something common among Jekusda members. Uh, any mention of our pioneers? Let me get three pioneers of St. Andrew's Church. Pioneers. Yes, Elvis needs to speak. Uh, we, have, we 
William Miller. William Miller. Thank you. Uh, any other person? Uh, I needed three. Three. Yes, Nelly? Ellen White. Ellen White. Just that common. Yes, it, it, it has got to you, Sylvia. <laughs> Yeah. Jerome. Jerome. So, friends, you look at this. I remember people, you people even James White. She said Ellen White. Can you say James White? <laughs> there, there are many, there are many. Sometimes you walk around and you hear people mention people like uh, Alonzo Trevin Jones. Okay. The common one is A.T. Jones. You've heard of that? Uh, people like Elliot Joseph Wagona, people like John Smith, Martin Luther. Of course, now you've heard of them. Now, what do you know about them? Go and look at that. So this is what we are doing. That was just a sample of what the lesson is telling us. Like, we need to see our face in the gold, seeing the goldsmith face in that. This gold, the book of Philippians chapter 2, verses 4. Somebody read. Philippians 2, verses 4. That's the chapter I really love most in the New Covenant. The New Testament. Philippians two four, yes. Thank you. That is the same thing that Peter says in Second Peter chapter two, like you exhort you one another. We are seven day Adventists, and the author is asking a question: Why need, do we need to go to church? I might have got trials throughout the week that I feel burdened. Of course, I might go to friends who might discourage me. Look at the life of Job. How many of us want to be described as Job was described? How was Job described? Like, how did God describe Job? Job 1.1. One, one. A righteous man. Perfect man. Who is still with evil. Can God say that of you today? Just ask yourself that rhetorical question. The author asks, look at your life. The last 24 hours. Don't even go throughout the week. Because I know throughout the week, yeah, things, well, things happen. Things happen. Just look at the, the last 24 hours. Of which I know 12 hours still require part of the Sabbath. So you are holy. Yes. The, the, the 12 hours you are holy. So look at the 12 before the 12 hours. Look at your life then. Do, do you see your life? Can God describe you as a man who is still evil? Can God describe you as a holy man, a righteous man? That is the question you need to ask yourself. But yes. Christ is coming soon. And I believe he's coming sooner than we expect. But who will he take with him? Or oh, that I will go with him. I don't know about you. But I pray that you be with me there. And so, Romans chapter 3, and verses 10 and 11 says something. Just need to summarize faster. So that we can welcome questions and comments. 3.10 And 11, use the mic kindly. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Amen. Amen. That is why I love about... Paul. But now this book, the book of Romans, this is, what, this is the book that is called the book of the scholars of the Bible. Like you look at it that way, but you won't sit direct as you think it is because it's somehow intertwined within all the other epistles of Paul. And now Paul says something, that there's none righteous, none, not even one. And so he gets somewhere uh, in the book Patriots and Prophets, page 431, and she says that righteousness is love. So what does Paul say? That there's nobody who loves. So question, can I love? Oh, okay, do I love? Whichever kind of love. But this love, I can only get it when I have Christ. 
Yeah? If I have no Christ in my heart, then I cannot love. No matter how much I want to love. Yeah, God respects how much we, we desire to do good. Man was created perfect. Which book is that? That man was created the image of God. Genesis. Genesis chapter? Somebody says the chapter? I didn't say you said the verse, yet the chapter. Nobody's chapter 2. Okay, now somebody said the verse. <laughs> it's, sorry? It's, 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 it's an interesting thing. We did it last quarter. But in the image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. So he made man and he made male and female in his own image. Chapter 2 and verse 26. What does it say? 26 and 27. It just says that. You don't need to read. You can read it on your own time. So this is it. So man was created in the image of God. It means that man was created perfect and good. And that's why in verse 29 of Genesis chapter 1, God describes that everything was good and perfect. Yes, now this is it. But today, is man perfect? We are corrupted. Right? We are corrupted by sin. And that's why Paul is saying that no one is Russia. We are corrupted by sin. What separates man from God? Iniquity. Isaiah says it so well. That the iniquity have separated you from God. And now that you can't see the face of God because of your iniquity. So friends, yes, man was created in the image of God. But t- today, do we hold the image of God? Not entirely. But I believe we can hold the image of God. And how can we hold the image of God? The image of God is the character of God. The God of God is righteousness. So yes, the image of God was lost to all man. That is very true. And so by one man, sin came into the world. And by one man, salvation upon all men. And this one man is the first Adam. This second man is the second Adam, Jesus Christ. So friends, the image of God was lost in us. Until I accept the righteousness of Christ then I do not hold the image of God. I know we've been taught in CRE, those who did CRE, high school, primary, that we hold the image of God. Yes, that's a good teaching. But that does not exist today. The image of God was lost to man. And we have to trust in God. And that's why we have to go through the refining moment, through this high-heated fire, that we can get to the ultimate point. You know, Job, what made him move forward is that he saw the ultimate end. That is heaven. When I look at the beauty of heaven, then I would consider every persecution of this world to be useless. The problem is today we don't see you are persecuted. Why? For me to realize that I'm being persecuted, then I have to be different from what people do. So if I don't realize that I'm being persecuted, then it means I'm doing what people are doing. That passed you. But this is it. We are Seventh-day Adventists. Are the light of the world. I don't know if you are, but I know the church is. So you have to live to that name. The world persecutes you. In what way? Have you ever found, have you ever found yourself in a group of men, especially in this corporate world you walk out, uh, move into, into hotels, and uh, the only food available there is meat? The only food available there is meat. Okay. And if you get veg, what you're being told, hey, that's how it is. You know, this thing, you only experience it, this thing, you only experience it if you are health reformed. If you are not, then you won't feel the, the persecution there. That's what I'm trying to say. You walk, okay. You might say that is deep. But anyway, it isn't. You walk amongst individuals. And you find people making plans for the weekend. But then you are here with your Sabbath. Even if somebody just tells you, my friend, why don't you just skip one day? Why don't you just skip one day? After all, God will understand. <laughs> if you know, I have met those statements. God will understand. God is understanding God. Which I believe he is. Of course he is. 
But then God is also a just God. And that's why he says in Psalms 105, he says this, that mercy and judgment has done what? Has kissed each other. So God is as just as he's merciful. And so for us to get to his image, the image of God is his character, his righteousness. We need to reflect the image of God to us, on us today. We, have, we need to have the character of God in us today, which is his righteousness. And this character cannot just be found on a silver plate. This character has to be tempted. Like we all said, you can't know that you cannot steal until you get a position of stealing. You can't know you can't cheat an exam if you never sat an exam. It sounds funny, but that's the truth. So, God needs us to be perfect. No, Christ, when he comes, he will take his own. And a question I always ask myself, will God take certain sinners just because they profess to believe in his son and then he leaves certain sinners because they didn't believe in his son? Will God be merciful? Will, will God be just in that? How will he be able to say, you know, these people, these, these, people are, these people are going with me to heaven and then these people are not going with me to heaven? These are sinners, yes. And these are also sinners. But now these sinners are going with me to heaven. How, how will, even, even me as an individual, I say God is not just. So then God has to have an attribute in his man that will make him know how to choose people. And that's why when Christ gives stories in his last days, he speaks about the five foolish and the five wise. And he brings the story of the oil. Uh, I would like to ask a certain simple question, then, we, then I'll welcome comments. Yeah? The story of the virgins. What does the oil represent? Yeah, character here. Yes, Elvis? Uh, I was reading that part. Uh -huh. uh, and I tried to come up with some analogy from the Bible too. Mm. Uh, the Bible tells us that we are the lamp of the world. And being the lamp of the world, mm. uh, can a lamp light without oil? No, it can't. So the oil to me, uh, I defined it, the oil represents the Christ-like character. Amen. Amen. So with that, but with the Christ-like character, mm. it is in bodies that are prone to do evil. So it is Christ-like character with the aid from the Holy Spirit to overcome the weakness. So for me, the oil is Christ-like character. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So the oil in this place, as he said, is the character, is the character. The oil in this place also some describe it as the Holy Spirit, yeah? It represents both. Like, yes, and you know, the, the funniest thing is that character is not transferable. That's the truth of the matter. That's why the, the foolish ones, when they asked, you know, sometimes we do believe that the Bible needs to be so soft. And a friend of mine says, why should the Bible call some people foolish? It calls the foolish fool. The foolish virgins. Like, uh, like, like, does it make sense? That's the Bible. Huh? But it is. The character of man, the only thing that we take to heaven from this world today is our character. And our character is our capital. Our capital is that which you are going with to heaven. So look at your life. And we need to get to a character that Christ possessed. That is the character that we need to look at. Despite everything that happens in our life, the ultimate end is that we need to have a Christ-like character. And one thing I like saying that we need to be more than deep Pharisees if you think we can get to be like God by our own strength. Do you know how God loves? When Christ says that love ye one another, say I have loved you. Do you know how Christ loves? No, we can't get there if, you are not, if Christ is not in you. So that I will welcome questions and the parts that are really skipped. Any comment? Uh, Elvis, speak. Uh, so you will you'll allow me to be, be, be commenting today. Uh, please do. Please do. Yeah, precious Anna. 
though uh, there is some question that is on the Sunday part, it asks that how do you understand what Ellen White says says to us in the quote? There is that quote that we had it on the Sunday part. So the understanding from the quote is something that is very key to the learning of this lesson. Uh, I hope we could have gone back to the quote. We have 10 minutes to time. Let's be concluding. The quote, it says that the honor of God, the honor of Christ, is involved in the perfection of the character of his people. Amen. Uh, so going to the question, I'll just try to answer the question. It says that Christ is mainly interested in the perfection of our character. Daily, daily, Christ is interested in the perfection of our character. And also, what is the devil interested in? In the imperfection of that character. So there is something like a war which is not easy. So it is for we as people who are prone to weakness, we should be very much uh, aligned to one side so that we can be saved. And that is the side of Christ. And it is only through the helper that was given to us, that is the Holy Spirit that we can conquer. So we should kill us to Kazani. Kazani, Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Through the church activity, in place. Mm. Yeah. But even through the church activities, we do grow daily. So find yourself in one. Yes, Brother Matoro. Praise God. Amen. Uh, one thing that stands out mm. in this lesson we started yeah, that we have had, the last three lessons that we studied today, it uh, stands out clearly that the, you take those two, I believe all of us here today, at one point you are apparently taking chemicals and the characters love, characters love, love I, I, I can. And before you start the the process, you could have something in mind that at the end of the day, it is not going to come out as you put everything in the apparatus, right? There have to be changes before you start. So what you don't know here is the result, right? So this is how life the sufferings that we are going through, the, uh, the character transformation. So, uh, the lessons that stand out is a conflict between good and evil, God and Satan, right? In every day, in every walk as a Christian, not that if you are a Christian you have no temptation. There are temptations. Even Jesus himself was tempted. And he overcame all the temptations. So, this comes to a question. Why was Jesus born in uh, a midst earth? Right? It's just simple to show us that even us, in our weak vessel, we can still right? So, character transformation. You find a story of the, the parable of ten budgets, right? They are the same at the beginning, right? But at the end of the day, was it the same? No. Just because of the decision. Right? In life today, things might be good because we learn the lesson writer somewhere in the, in, the, in the one of the days of the week. He tells us that even in a certain sight, things are good, things are enjoyable, right? 
And indeed, they are enjoyable. Are they enjoyable? Kind of I think good there. They are. But the Bible tells us that they are just for a short time. Mm. They will demean and lose their, their value. Right? But God tells us that in Him, if we choose to be on His side, all the temptations we, in my, in my language, we say is that the last laughter is so nice. First, love. So Amen. may our life be a reflection of the love. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. Yes, Sylvia. Just to add up, yeah. there is something that stood out for me during this week's study. We get to learn that every time the goldsmith finds that the gold is not purified. Mm-hmm. He hits the, the, the flame, Ama, the fire is burned up more. Ama, in a, the heat of the fire is increased. Yeah, the heat is increased. Every time the heat is increased. The same way, every time Christ finds that our character is not developed to the point that he wants himself to be seen in us, the heat must be increased in the fire. The temptations, the trials, the sufferings that you're going to face through, they must be heated up so that the image of Christ must be reflected. Thank you. Amen. Amen. The ultimate purpose of God for all men is the salvation. Yeah? The redemption of man is what God is interested in. And so, you know, one thing that even the devil didn't understand is the redemption story. Even until today, he doesn't understand it clearly. Like he's surprised, how can the Son of God come and die for sinful, hard human being? Like, he didn't expect Christ to be born as a man. No, Christ was born as a man, completely as a man. A man who could have sinned if he wanted. Because I believe sin is a choice. A man who could have decided to also take us with him. You know, if he would have sinned, then there, was no, there could have not been hope for us. If Christ would have sinned, even Enoch, Enoch, who is in heaven, would have fallen. I don't know how practical that thing seems to you. But even Enoch, who has already gone to heaven, would have been brought back to earth. Because it's only through the righteousness of Christ that every man has ever been saved. Even Elijah, who is in heaven, even Moses, whom we see that... (laughs) His grave was taken away, would have been brought back to earth. But yet Christ saw that there was a very big risk of him sinning. Very true. But he came to earth. And Philippians chapter 2 explains it very clearly. When you read from verses 6 going to verses 8, you see that in the lack of sinful flesh, he was born. Like a man he became. And he did that which man could do. And quotations are there. If you read the book of story of redemption, page 18, you again go to the book, Christ Object Lesson, page 454. There are several quotations which will tell you that Christ had no power whatsoever which supersedes human. So a question I would ask, can a man be perfect today? Amen. That man can be perfect. I know there are always contradiction concerning that. But even from the lesson we are getting that a man can be perfect. And that is why our sister reminded us here from the lesson author saying that each and every time he could bring back the gold and the gold was not in its ultimate position, what could he do? He would change the salt and the chemical he would use for refining the gold and heat up the fire once more until the gold would reflect his face. Until it will reflect its face. And God will bring to us trials over and over. How would God know that you won't steal, that you can't steal if he has not given you that trial of stealing? Yet you know the streets of heaven are made of gold. <laughs> just, just think upon that. So, how would you know? You know, friends, these things, these trials show us our position. 
if you've never been questioned about your belief, you can't be firm on your belief. I one day involved a, f- a friend of mine, a theologian. And until I was questioning him concerning certain belief that we have as a church, he realized that he was confused. He didn't know. And that is the position that most of us are in today. So, yes, maybe you can see yourself not getting to that position of being questioned. But friends, for us to know our, our position, then you need to look at what trials are bringing to us. That when they shall say peace, 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 uh, that is First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 3, then what shall come? The end thereof shall come. Their surprise. But the five, was, the five wise virgins shall now be caught by surprise. Why? Because they depend on God and they believe that God will direct them and God will give them the wisdom that is required. That's why the, the wise man tells us that the beginning of the knowledge of God is the beginning of wisdom. It might seem foolishness to us. You know, when you see a man walking out with an umbrella, yeah? Our time is up. you see a man walking out with an umbrella, and the sun is shining bright. Most of us will say, what's up with that man? What's up with that man? But maybe this man heard that rain will come, and he walks with his umbrella. The only thing that will prove true to his umbrella carry is whether it will rain or not. Yeah? And if it rains, people who didn't have an umbrella will say like, oh, that I would have carried my umbrella. Did the man who has the umbrella, will he regret? No. If he doesn't train, this man who has an umbrella, he just carried his umbrella, will he still regret? No. So friend, this is it. Seventh-day Adventists are in this position. We are getting, especially towards the end, because I believe the Sunday law is soon enough to be passed. And we are getting to a point that we will not be able to go back and pick the umbrella while already it's, it's raining. So when that time shall come and the probation of man shall have been closed, for we know that those who are in the church will be first judged, right? The seventh advent is first, the probation will be closed. If it finds you that an umbrella, then it will be a problem. So let us hold fast to our belief. Let us hold fast to the promise of God, for we know still that his promises are here and amen. That God wants man to be saved, and he will do everything in his position that man is saved. The only problem is that some of us will be taught until their death. <laughs> That's the only problem. Some of us will always be taught until their death. But God will still teach you. You ask yourself why those who, sinful, who are much sinful live longer. But God gives them a chance so that they may, they may be saved. God will teach you. And even if you will be dying, you are old age, but he will still teach you. He will never give up on you. So let us cling to the promise that God has given us and let us come to him. Amidst these trials, let us trust that what he wants for us is our redemption. Unless there is any other burning comment or question, is there any? Uh, seemingly there is none. Uh, I'll ask Byron to pray with us. Let us rise. Kindly give him the mic. Oh, <laughs> 